हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर विकास जैन फ्रॉम बी एस अनंतपुरिया इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ फार्मेसी फरीदाबाद टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट मॉड्यूल मोनोफिजिक लिक्विड्स रॉ मटेरियल्स इट हैज बीन टेकन फ्रॉम पेपर प्रोडक्ट डेवलपमेंट वन थ्रू दिस लेक्चर यू विल लर्न अबाउट इम्पॉर्टेंस ऑफ रॉ मटेरियल्स दैट जनरली used during manufacturing formulation of oral liquids various raw materials includes vehicles stabilizers such as preservative antioxidants and buffers complexing agents organoleptic agents that include sweeteners flavors and colors formulation consideration generally include raw material selection so raw material specifications are more important in liquid products as the contaminants can adversely affect the formulation more than in solid doses form also many features of liquid products are controlled by including several raw materials such as sweeteners thickening agents and so forth further complicating the matrixing of formulation at the development stage the microbial quality of raw material both solid and liquid need to be critically evaluated it is noteworthy that several raw materials used in liquid products may fall into food category and even though one is purchasing pharmaceutical grade material newly enacted law in united states require all foreign manufacturers to make a complete declaration of the composition of materials companies nowadays are encouraged to revise their specifications based on this additional information to control the quality of raw materials more tightly the excipients to be incorporated in liquids should be of grass category what is grass we generally know it is generally regarded as safe and proper selection of excipients to be made in accordance with iig database iig means in active ingredient guideline gas chromatography has found widespread use in pharmaceutical analysis by virtue of its application in purity and control analysis of raw materials content and quality assessment of doses forms including product stability and in the quantitative measurement of drugs in biological fluids although HPLC has largely superseded gas chromatography as the compendial chromatographic method of choice for the assay of pharmaceuticals the application of GC continues to be an important and valuable analytical method for monitoring certain impurities and for the determination of various related substances and OVIs OVIs means organic volatile impurities in many pharmaceutical doses forms as well as in raw materials vehicles the first and foremost thing that is to be taken in consideration while formulating a liquid doses form is vehicle vehicles are carriers used for delivery of drugs in liquid preparations in regard to monophysic liquid preparations vehicles are categorized into two types aqueous and non aqueous type aqueous based vehicles are preferred because of lack of toxicity compatibility and good solvent characteristics non aqueous solvents are used as vehicles particularly for cutaneous or external preparations however for oral liquids these solvents are used as co-solvents employed to increase the solubility of therapeutic agents aqueous vehicles water is the most preferred vehicle because of its lack of toxicity physiological compatibility and ability to dissolve a wide range of solutes potable water is the most economic option the dissolved salts in potable water however may sometimes be undesirable and lead to incompatibilities with active principles in these instances purified water is preferred over potable water purified water 
is prepared mainly by techniques such as distillation and ion exchange. Distillation stills in various shapes and styles are available in a wide capacity range. In ion exchange method, water is passed through a column of cation and anion exchangers. Water obtained in this manner is called deionized or demineralized water. Efforts should be made to provide as much microbial free water as possible. This can be readily achieved by installing a loop system in which the incoming water is first subjected to ultraviolet sterilizer, then carbon filters, then demineralizer and a 5 micron filter. After that it has been sent to a heated tank from where it is passed again through an ultraviolet sterilizer and then a 0.22 micron filter before bringing it into the product. Water coming out of 5 micron filter can be circulated. When using a loop, it is important to establish methods for draining the dead water in the tap and the loop before using it. It must be ensured that flow water does not exceed the sterilizing capacity of ultraviolet system installed. Ion exchange resins used in the water systems are important for successful maintenance of low bacterial counts. An appropriate example of the mixed resin bed would be Ambergard XC352 prepared by Rome and Haas company and Amberlite IR122 supplied by Sigma Eldritch. The former is a large pore micro reticular type 1 quaternary ammonium ion exchange resin. It is effective for a wide range of flow rates and for many different bacterial strains. IR120 is a strongly acidic cation exchange resin that balances the chemical equilibrium of the water. Non aqueous vehicles. Sometimes it may not be possible to keep the ingredients in aqueous solutions at all temperatures or stability may also be a problem. The use of non aqueous solvents becomes unavoidable in such situation. In non aqueous vehicles, ethanol is most widely used solvent. It contains ethyl alcohol in the range of 94.9 to 96% volume by volume. It is commonly used as a co-solvent, toxicological effects of ethanol compromises its use in pharmaceutical preparation and the label must contain alcohol and upper limits with respect to the concentration that may be used in the formulations. Another example from non aqueous vehicle is a propylene glycol. Propylene glycol is an odorless, colorless, viscous liquid that contains two hydroxyl groups. Glycols, that is compounds with two hydroxyl groups except propylene glycol are rarely used internally due to their toxicity. It is used in pharmaceutical preparations as a co-solvent, generally as a replacement for glycerin. Another agent in this category is glycerol or glycerin. It is an odorless sweet liquid that is miscible with water and whose co-solvency properties are due to the presence of 3-hydroxyl group. Next example is polyethylene glycol, commonly known as PEG. PEG is a polymer composed of repeating units of the monomer ethylene oxide. The physical state of the polymer is dependent on the number of repeat units and hence on the molecular weight. Low molecular weight grades PEG 200 and 400 are preferred as co-solvents in pharmaceutical solutions. Examples of some commonly used solvents includes acacia syrup, alcohol, aromatic elixirs, aromatic syrup, cherry syrup, cocoa syrup, glycerin, isopropyl alcohol, orange syrup, purified water, 
sterile water for injection sterile water for irrigation simple syrup cherry syrup ora sweet sucrose with glycerin and sorbitol ora plus sorbitol glycerin and liquid glucose as we all know that liquid formulations are more vulnerable for degradation decomposition and microbial contamination and in order to prevent all those phenomena to get happened generally stabilizers are incorporated that prevent the decomposition process and slow down the degradation of the product so the stabilizers generally constitute of preservatives antioxidants and buffers preservatives are generally those agents that prevent the growth of microorganism in formulation during shelf life of a product an ideal preservative can be qualitatively defined as one that meets the different criteria first criteria is it must be effective against a broad spectrum of microorganisms it must be physically chemically and microbiologically stable for the lifetime of that particular product lifetime means till it expires it must be non toxic non sensitizing and adequately soluble and compatible with other formulation components too it should remain acceptable with respect to taste and odor of the at which at the concentration at which it has been used so the combination of two or more preservatives is generally used to achieve the desired antimicrobial efficacy there are four major classes of preservatives acidic neutral mercurial and quaternary ammonium compounds the last three classes that is neutral mercurial and quaternary ammonium compounds find little value in oral liquids but are widely used in ophthalmic nasal and parenteral products only first category that is acidic preservatives are used widely in oral liquids examples of some pharmaceutically useful preservative from acidic class first agent is phenol that has used in concentration of 0.2 to 0.5% second agent is chlorocresol that has been used in concentration 0.05 to 0.1% orthophenylphenol 0.005 to 0.01% alkyl esters of para hydroxy benzoic acids used in the concentration range of 0.001 to 0.2% benzoic acid and its salt in the concentration range of 0.1 to 0.3 boric acid and its salt 0.1 to 1% sorbic acid and its salt 0.05 to 0.2 from neutral category first agent is chlorobutanol that has been used in concentration of 0.5% benzyl alcohol in the range of 1% orthophenyl ethyl alcohol in the range of 0.2 to 1% under the category mercurials dimerosal 0.001 to 0.1% phenyl mercuric acetate and nitrate in the range of 0.002 to 0.005% nitromersol in the concentration range of 0.001 to 0.1 quaternary ammonium compounds example includes benzalkonium chloride in the range of 0.004 to 0.02 cetyl pyridinium chloride 0.01 to 0.02% phenols due to their characteristic odor and instability in presence of oxygen are of little use in oral preparations para hydroxy benzoic acid esters and salts of benzoic acid and sorbic acid have adequate water solubility and possess both antibacterial and antifungal activity 
frequently combination of two or more esters of para hydroxy benzoic acid are used to achieve the desired antimicrobiological effect methyl and propyl paraben for instance are used in the ratio of 10 is to 1 respectively parabens or para hydroxy benzoates are effective over a wide ph range but are more active in acidic conditions that is at ph 4 to 5 various combinations of methyl and propyl hydroxy benzoates are used to give a total concentration of about 0.1% weight by volume mercurials and quaternary ammonium compounds are subject to a variety of incompatibilities mercurials are readily reduced to free mercury whereas quaternary ammonium compounds are inactivated by a variety of anionic substances under the category of discussion that is stabilizer antioxidant are a second group of additives that helps in prevention of oxidation of the added component in liquid doses form oxidation often involves the addition of oxygen or halogen or removal of hydrogen antioxidants generally may act either as oxidative chain reaction blockers or they themselves act as reducing agents sulfides act in a quantitative manner that is oxidation starts only after consumption of sulfides so they generally sacrifice themselves to protect the product five amino salicylic acid acts as antioxidant in presence of vitamin c and e one another example is harmycin can be stabilized by hydroquinone butylated deoxycholate and ascorbyl palmitate examples of various agents under antioxidants category first is acyl cysteine ascorbic acid ascorbyl palmitate butylated hydroxy anisole butylated hydroxy toluene gallic acid hypophosphorus acid l tocopherol monothioglycerol propyl gallate sodium ascorbate sodium formaldehyde sodium metabisulfite sulfites thioglycerol and thiourea antioxidants like sodium metabisulfite ascorbic acid thioglycerol and cysteine hydrochloride provide protection primarily in aqueous phase oil soluble antioxidants include lecithin propyl gallate ascorbyl palmitate and butylated hydroxy toluene out of all these agents butylated hydroxy anisole butylated hydroxy toluene l tocopherol and alkyl gallates are particularly popular in pharmaceutical industry bha and bht have a pronounced order and should be used in low concentrations alkyl gallates have bitter taste whereas l tocopherol is well suited for edible or oil preparation under category of stabilizer the third agents are buffers changes in ph of a preparation may occur during storage for various reason buffers are added to stabilize ph levels in liquids a suitable buffer system should have adequate buffer capacity commonly used buffer system that is available with us that are to be used in pharmaceutical systems are acetates citrates phosphates and glutamates examples of various buffers utilized in development and protection and stabilization of pharmaceutical liquids hydrochloric acid buffer effective ph range is 1.2 to 2.2 phosphate buffer ph range is 2 to 8 acid phthalate buffer ph range is 2.2 to 4 acetate buffer 2.8 to 6 neutralized phthalate buffer effective ph range is 4.2 to 5.8 citrophosphate buffer effective ph range is 5 to 7.6 carbonate buffer effective ph range 
5.8 to 7.4. Triethanolamine buffer, effective pH range 7 to 9.2. Alkaline borate buffer, pH range 8 to 10. Glutamate buffer, pH 8.7 to 10.7. And the last one, ammonia buffer, effective pH range is 9.5. To 10.9. The next excipient under discussion is complexing agents. Complexation generally relies on relatively weak forces that do include one or more of London forces, hydrogen bonding, and hydrophobic interactions. The solubility of complex increases with the concentration of complexing agent. The complex can also precipitate out if concentration of complexing agent is increased beyond a certain limit that suggests the concentration and amount of complexing agent should be chosen wisely. Various examples of complexing agent according to their category is described here. The first type is inorganic. Its examples are alkali metal hydroxides with ammonia. The second type is coordination complexing type. Example is hexamine cobalt 3 chloride. The third type is chelates. Examples are EDTA and EGTA. Next category is metal olefins. Example is ferrocene. Next type is inclusion type complexing agent and its examples are choleic acid and cyclodextrins and last category of complexing agents is molecular complexes that includes polymers. Let's come to sweetening agents. Sweeteners are indispensable components of oral doses forms. It may comprise large portion of solid content in most liquid oral doses forms. Sweeteners are either nutritive or not nutritive. It can be calorigenic or non-calorigenic. Non-caloric sweetening agents are preferred for diabetic patients only as these do not supply any kind of energies. Sucrose is the most widely used sweetener in conjunction with sorbitol, glycerin and several other polyols. Artificial sweeteners are several times sweeter than sucrose and required at a concentration not greater than about 0.2% only. It can be used with sugars and alcohols to enhance the degree of sweetness. Generally, the most commonly employed sweetening agent that is saccharine, it is 250 to 500 times sweeter than sugar. Its sodium and calcium salts are most widely used. It exhibit high water solubility and are chemically and physically stable over a wide pH range. Saccharine is generally not metabolized in the digestive tract and is excreted rapidly in the urine. As a result, saccharine does not contribute calories to the diet. In continuation to various type of sweetening agent, saccharine is widely used in foods and pharmaceuticals. It is sweet at very low concentrations but bitter at higher concentrations. Cyclamate and aspartame are other sweetening agents that are about 30 to 200 times as sweet as common sugar. Aspartame does not have a significant bitter aftertaste when compared to saccharine. Another example is monoammonium glycerizinate that has a lingering sweet after taste. That's why it is used for taste masking and enhancing chocolate flavor too. Various sweeteners available in the market along with their generic name and functionality is being discussed here. The first agent is aspartame. It is amino acid based sweeteners. It is generally 180 to 200 times more sweeter than sucrose. Next agent is acesulfame K. It is also a sweetener that is 200 times more sweeter than sucrose. Next agent is cyclamate sodium. It is sodium sweeteners. It is 30 times more 
potent as compared to sugar in context to sweetness. Next example is Neohesperidine dihydrochlorochalcon. It is high intensity sweetener. It is 1500 to 2000 times more sweeter than sucrose. Next example is widely used agent that is saccharine sodium. It is a sweetener with soluble characteristics and it is generally 500 times more sweeter than sucrose. Next example is stevia that is a herb. It is 200 times more sweeter than sucrose. Next example is thomatin. It is protein based natural sweetener. It is around 3000 times more sweeter than sucrose. Next example is strehalose. It is non reducing disaccharide, non hygroscopic, low reactivity, acts as granulation aid and helps in taste masking. Next example is fructose or levulose. It is endotoxin free white crystalline powder with a very sweet taste. Another example is sucralose. It is 600 times sweeter than sucrose. It is heat stable and also stable over a wide pH range. Next agent is lactitol. It is non-hygroscopic but very soluble. It can be used as an alternative to sorbitol. Next agent is xylitol. It is white crystalline powder with very sweet cool taste. Next example is tea xylose or it is always already known as wood sugar. It is a natural pentose obtained from xylen portion of hemicellulose from plant cell wall. Last example is sorbitol liquid. It is non-crystallizing aqua syrup. Dry substance is 68 to 72 percent and hexitol content is greater than 80 percent. We have discussed so many agents that has been used and explored as sweeteners out of which stevia is a South American herb used as a natural sweetener. The leaves of stevia Rawodiana plant have a refreshing taste with zero glycemic index and zero calories. It is about 200 times more sweeter than sugar and far healthier. This particular thing can be taken and administered to patients suffering from type 2 diabetes. Glycerin is commonly used for its solvent as well as its humectant effect but it is seldom used as a single sweetener because of its mouth warming and burning effect. Now we are going to discuss various adversities associated with sweeteners. The first example is sucrose. It is most commonly employed during preparation of syrups. It generally causes dental caries and it is not suitable for patients suffering from diabetes. Next is sorbitol. Sorbitol may induce diarrhea and flatulence at high doses. Another agent cyclamate. It has been reported for known carcinogenicity and it has been banned in United States of America. Another agent that is saccharine. It is also known for its carcinogenicity but its carcinogenicity always remain controversial. Nowadays, it has been widely used as sweetener. Next example is of aspartame. The problems associated with administration of aspartame includes angiodermia and urticaria. It is dangerous for person with phenylketonuria and it is also not recommended for pregnant or lactating women as it may induce certain kind of stereogenicity. Flavors marks the disagreeable tastes of the drugs. It is particularly useful in pediatric formulation to ensure patient compliance. Its good smell and good taste may attract a child take the medication as per prescription. Inclusion of flavoring agent enable 
easy identification of liquid products. There are basically four basic sensation salty, bitter, sweet, and sour. So, the combination of flavors and additives is required to mask these tastes. As far as discussion on flavors is concerned, four basic tests are to be masked. So, here few examples has been quoted that can specifically mask salty taste. For masking salty taste, suitable masking flavor could be chosen any of the apricot, butterscotch, licorice, peach or vanilla. For masking bitter taste, we can include anise flavor, chocolate flavor, grapefruit flavor, mint, poison fruit flavor, wild cherry, licorice and coffee flavor. For masking sweet taste, flavor from vanilla fruits, berries, bubblegum flavor, grape can be incorporated. For masking of sour taste, citrus fruit flavor can be incorporated, licorice flavor, raspberry flavor, lemon flavor, orange flavor, cherry flavor and grapefruit flavor may also be incorporated. A large number of flavors and their combinations are available to mask the bitterness. Bitterness is most difficult taste sensation to mask completely. Miracle Berry contains a glycoprotein that transiently and selectively binds to bitter taste bud and hence can help in masking bitterness. The degree of bitterness masking in descending order can be given as the most effective one is cocoa syrup followed by raspberry syrup followed by cherry followed by cinnamon followed by compound sarsaparilla followed by citric acid followed by licorice followed by aromatic elixir following orange syrup and followed by wild cherry that is least effective in masking bitter taste many fruit syrups can also be used to effectively mask salty and bitter taste. Sour substances containing hydrochloric acid are most effectively neutralized with raspberry and other fruit syrups. Metallic tastes in oral liquid products that is due to presence of iron are usually masked by extracts of burana, a tropical fruit. Menthol and chloroform if incorporated in any of the formulation acts as desensitizing agents. Apart from flavors, there are certain flavor enhancers and potentiators that helps in enhancing the efficacy of flavors used. So flavor enhancers are used universally in food and pharmaceutical industries. Sugars, carboxylic acids such as citric, malic and tartaric acid, common salt, amino acids are most oftenly employed. MSG that is monosodium glutamate has limited use in pharmaceuticals because it is not a sweetener. Citric acid is most frequently used followed by malic acid and tartaric acid. Common salt along with also provides similar effects. For example, Vanilla flavor is effectively enhanced by addition of common salt. Suitable color associated with the flavor enhances the attractiveness of the product. Apart from increasing aesthetic value, the colorant may mask the strongly color degradation product too. It provides easy product identification and differentiation between the similar products. It is essential that chosen color is acceptable in that country in which the product is to be sold. In India, Bureau of Standard describes the Indian standards for edible synthetic colors permitted under the Prevention of Food and Adulteration Rules 1955, Ministry of Health, Government of India. A single color may have different names in different countries. For example, Amaranth 
is also known as Bordox S, CI Food Red 9, and CI Acid Red 27. Natural colors include carotenoids, chlorophylls, anthocyanins, riboflavins, caramel, and extracts of beetroot. Synthetic or coal tar dyes tend to give brighter colors as compared to natural one and are generally more stable than natural dyes but it may also be associated with hypersensitivity reactions azo dyes yellow 5 and 6 have demonstrated cross reactivity with aspirin and indomethacin hence should not be incorporated in the formulation with such agents quinoline dyes yellow 10 and yellow 11 have been linked with contact sensitization. Even some xanthine dyes F, D, and C, red 3 and red 22 are potent photosensitizers. Let us discuss the importance of harmonization of standards as far as raw materials are concerned. So, what is the need for international harmonization of standards? So the simplest answer is pharmaceutical industry is multinational and products sold in markets worldwide regulatory approval is required in each country if the international harmonization of standard has been established it will become more easy to market and manufacture the products according to the specifications that is existing in every country standards for each drug substance and excipient are contained in pharmacopias. The pharmacopias with the largest international use are first one United States Pharmacopia and National Formulary USPNF, British Pharmacopia, European Pharmacopia, and Japanese Pharmacopia. So, students, let us now summarize what we have learnt in this module. First thing for development of monophysic liquid doses forms, excipients such as preservative, antioxidants, buffers, complexing agents and organoleptic agents play a crucial role. Standardization and regulation of these excipients are of utmost importance since it directly affects the properties of oral liquids. Uniform standards in all pharmacopoeia if it is possible, would rather facilitate enhanced production efficiency. It will enable the marketing of a single formulation of a product internationally. And it will also enhance regulatory approval of pharmaceutical products worldwide. Thank you.